I am back solving another released AP Calc BC multiple choice exam. This is from 2003. And if you can tell right away, this is not the usual college board format, I believe because one of the teachers, one, one teacher, decided to uh, make their own format. And that's why it looks like this instead of the typical college board format. Okay, which is okay. And I do... I was able to find a worked out solution, so hopefully it's correct. We'll see um, as I solve the problems myself. Okay, so if you have not solved this before, I recommend you to Google it. You can easily look at look for this AP Calc BC 2003 exam, something like that. Um, if not, if you can't find it, then just follow along in the video. Pause uh, when you see the problem and solve it yourself before watching me solve it. Okay, so let's begin. I'll probably solve a part of it uh, in this video, and then I'll split it up into a few parts again, as per usual. Okay, so this first one, y equals sine 3x, dy dx is equal to what? Well, we need to chain rule. So we first differentiate sine, which is cosine, so it's cosine of 3x, times derivative inside, derivative of 3x is 3. So it's 3 cosine 3x. Easy point right there. Limit as x approaches 0, e to x minus cosine x minus 2x over x squared minus 2x. How do we do this? Well, of course, we just plug in 0 first to see if we can get something. It would be 1 minus cosine 0 is 1, which is uh, 0 minus 0 over 0 on the bottom. So 0 over 0, indeterminate. So let's use L'Hopital's rule, maybe. So we differentiate the top. What do we get? We get e to the x. Derivative of e to x is e to x. Derivative of cosine is minus sine, so it becomes plus sine x. Derivative of 2x is 2. There's a minus sign in front, so minus 2. Over derivative of the bottom is 2x minus 2. We, we What do we get now? Um, we plug in x is 0. So you should always plug in x is 0. Uh, don't just keep doing L'Hopital's rule. Only if it's indeterminate, we do L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so what happens when we plug in 0 now? We get 1 plus 0 minus 2. Oh, that's non-zero, right? Over at the bottom would be 0 minus 2, which is, again, non-zero. So that's why we would stop doing loop plus rule and we plug in. So it'll be e to the 0 plus sine of 0. So I'll even write it out. Minus 2 over 2 times 0 minus 2. So that's equal to 1 minus 2 over minus 2, which is... Uh, negative 1 over negative 2, which is half. I get C. And that's what this person got also. Okay, we have this one, integral 3x plus 1 to the fifth power dx. So probably want to do a substitution. I probably don't want to expand this out, even though we could. We could use the binomial theorem or Pascal's triangle to expand it out. But let's rather do a substitution. It'll be probably be quicker. Okay u is 3x plus 1, it's a composite function, du would be 3dx, so our integral becomes u to the fifth times a third du, because 3x plus 1 is our u, so u to the fifth, dx is du over 3, or a third du, so this is a third times a sixth u to the sixth plus c, by the power rule, this is 1 over 18, uh, u is 3x plus 1 to the 6 plus c. So I back substitute it, and that looks like it is a. Okay. For t is between 0 to 13, an object travels along an elliptical path given by the parametric equations x is 3 cosine t, y is 4 sine t. At the point where t equals 13, the object leaves the path and travels along the line tangent to the path at that point. What is the slope of the line on which the object travels? So slope of the tangent line, that should sound familiar, that's derivative. So we've got to differentiate this parametrically, parametrically defined curve. dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. Okay, so what's dy dt? That is 4 cosine t. dx dt, that is minus 3 sine t. Okay, we want to evaluate this at t is equal to 13. Okay, so 
I can already see from the answers in terms of tangent. So let's say it's minus four thirds. Uh, this would be cotangent, which is one over tangent. So it'll be times one over tangent 13. Okay, so that looks like choice D. And that's what this person got too. Okay, so you got to be careful here. Cosine over sine is cotangent, but we know cotangent is 1 over tangent, so that's why tangent's on the bottom. Let y equals f of x be the solution to this differential equation, dy dx is x plus y, with initial condition f of 1 is equal to 2. What is the approximation for f of 2 if Euler's method is used, starting at x is 1, with a step size of 0 0.5? Okay, so we have f of 1 is 2, so Euler's method, we go by the step size of 0.5, so f of, the next point will be 1.5, 1, 1 takes a step of 0.5, becomes 1.5. This is approximately, we would use the initial condition, f of 1, the previous point, plus uh, f prime of 1, delta x, the step size. So f of 1 is 2. What is f prime of 1? We need to plug it into here. So f prime of 1 meaning dy, f is y, so f prime of 1 meaning dy dx evaluated at x is equal to 1 is x plus y. Our x is 1, our y is 2. So it would be uh, 3 times 0 0.5. The delta x is 0 0.5. So this is, that's 2 plus 1.5. That is 3.5. I'll just keep it in decimal form. Okay, so then the next point, f of 2. So 1.5 plus another step of 0 0.5. That is 2. That's approximately f of 1.5 plus f prime of 1.5 delta x. So f of 1.5, we approximate it previously as 3.5, f prime of 1.5, that would be, uh, again, we plug into here, 1.5 plus 3.5, that would be 5 times step size 0 0.5, which is 3.5 plus 2.5, that would be 6. The answer should be C. That's what this person got also. Okay. Where are all values of p for which this integral converges? We know that when it's just 1 over x to the n, n has to be greater than 1 for it to converge. So in this case, our n is 2p. So 2p has to be greater than 1. p is greater than half. 6 is c, as simple as that. Okay. Particle position of a particle moving in the xy plane is given by these parametric equations. For what values of t is the particle at rest? Particle is at rest when the velocity is zero. Okay, so we need to find the velocity vector. Okay, so x prime would be 3t squared minus 6t. And our y prime would be uh, 6t squared minus 6t minus 12, okay? We need the velocity in the x direction to be 0 and the velocity in the y direction to be 0. So both these derivatives have to be 0, okay? So we solve on both sides over here. If I factor out a 3t, then I get t minus 2. And then over here, if I factor out a 6 first, it'll be t squared minus t minus 2. Okay, so over here, I can see that t is 0 and t is 2 would give us uh, no uh, velocity in the x direction. Okay, but we, have, we just said that in order for this particle to be not moving, both in the x and y direction, the velocity has to be 0. So over here, um, if I factor that, that would be t minus 2 t plus 1 is equal to 0, so t is 2 and negative 1 here. So the only matching point, I mean the only time that 
both the uh, x prime and y prime are 0 as t is 2. So 7 should be c. Okay, hopefully that made sense. This integral, hopefully you can tell right away, substitution. u is x cubed, du would be 3x squared dx. So our integral becomes cosine of u, x squared dx would be du over 3. So let me pull the third out, du. So this is a third sine of u plus c. So that's a third sine of x cubed plus c. So that is b. f of x is this guy. Then f prime of 0 is what? Okay, so let's find a derivative first. So f prime of x would be, we need a chain rule. So it'll be 1 over x plus 4 e uh, plus e to the minus 3x. That's derivative of the log. And then we need to differentiate the inside, times derivative of the inside. So it'd be times derivative of x is just 1. Derivative of 4 is just 0. Derivative of e to the minus 3x is minus 3e to the minus 3x, because we need to chain rule again when we differentiate e to the negative 3x, which would be e to the negative 3x times negative 3, which is what I got over there. Okay, so f prime of 0 would be, we plug in x as 0 now. So it would be 0 plus 4 plus e to the 0, which is 1, so 4 plus 1 on the bottom times 1 uh, e to the 0 would be 1, so 1 minus 3, okay? So we get minus 2 over 5. So 9 is A. Okay, pretty easy so far. What is the value of summation n goes from 1 to infinity, 2 to n plus 1 over 3 to n? Hopefully you can tell that this is a geometric series right away. Whenever they ask you to find the sum of an infinite geometric series, infinite series in general, has to be something that you know. For example, a geometric series or one of the Taylor series that you know. Okay, so we can rewrite this as, so summation n goes from 1 to infinity. We can break this 2 to n plus 1 up as 2 times 2 to the n, and then at the bottom we leave the same. Why do I want to do that? Well, this 2, I can move outside. Oops, 1 to infinity. Um, this becomes 2 over 3 to the n. So this looks more like a geometric series now, right? So it's 2 times the first term over 1 minus common ratio. So, by the way, 2 over thirds, that's a common ratio. Absolute value of it is less than 1. So it's a convergence geometric series. So we can eliminate e right away. Now, as I said, it's first term, which is when n is 1, we get 2 thirds over 1 minus common ratio, which is 2 thirds as well. Okay, so this is 2 times, if I multiply by 3 on the top and bottom, it will be 2 over 3 minus 2, which is 4 over 1, which is 4. 10 is C. The Maclaurin series for 1 over 1 minus x is this guy. This looks like the definition of a power series type of thing. Which of the following is a power series expansion for x squared over 1 minus x squared? Okay, so I would go like this. 1 over 1 minus x. This is, let's expand this out term by term like uh, it is over here. So when n is 0, we get 1 because x to 0 is 1. Next would be n is 1, so that's x. Next would be n is 2, which is x squared plus x cubed plus so on, so forth. Okay, so I'm going to just write the first four terms there. Okay, so... Basically, we just want this to match this. So first, we can replace each x with a x squared, like a function. So let's say this is a function, okay? Wherever there's x, um, like for example, if we want f of 2, wherever there's x, we plug in 2. So now, we just want f of x squared. So wherever there's x, we plug in x squared. So this is 1 plus x squared plus x to the 4th plus x to the 6th plus so on and so forth. Okay? And then finally, we can multiply both sides by x squared. So it becomes x squared plus x to the 4th plus x to the 6th plus x to the 8th plus so on and so forth. Okay? 
So does this match one of the choices? It looks like choice D. And that's correct. Okay, so that's how we approach this one. Well, that's how I would approach this one. Rate of change of the volume of water in a tank with respect to time, T, is directly proportional to the square root of the volume. Which of the following is a differential equation that describes this relationship? So let's just translate the first sentence in terms of variables. Rate of change of the volume, so that's dV dt, in a tank with respect to time, T, is, so equals, directly proportional. That means it's like y equals kx. y is directly proportional to x. So it'll be k times proportional to what? The square root of the volume. So this should be the answer. 12e. As simple as that. Just translating the words into an equation. Simple as that. Okay? I'll probably finish this page and I'll call it a part. The graph of a function f is shown above. At which value of x is f continuous but not differentiable? Okay, so at point A, it's not differentiable because there's a sharp turn. Remember, there's three cases for when it's not differentiable. If it's discontinuous, first of all, if there's a sharp turn, and it is a vertical tangent. Okay, so here is the sharp turn case. So, and it is continuous there because the um, there is a value for a at, um, at x is equal to a, right? And then the limit from the left equals limit from the right. The limit uh, as x approaches a of uh, f of x is equal to f of a. That's the definition of continuity. So it's likely a, but let me go through the other choices. This is not differentiable because it's not continuous. Limit as x approaches b of f of x is not equal to f of b. The limit is this hole here, but the value of the function is actually up here. It's not continuous. Okay? So c, it is differentiable and continuous over here. And over here, it's not continuous once again, and therefore it's not differentiable. And over here, at e, is continuous and differentiable. Okay? That's how to approach that one. Oh, this is a typical slope field question. Slope field above is which one over here? Okay, so the ways to do this is uh, notice any patterns and you can, of course, just plug in points. Okay, so for example, for A to be true, if X and Y are both positive, then the slope is positive. Okay, um, that's true here. And then if X and Y are both negative, the slope is positive as well. Not the case here, the slopes are negative. Oh, at least some of them are negative, right? This, the slope should always be positive no matter what, because we square both things. Okay, so that's clearly not the case. Cross that out as well. Okay, now we get over here. Let's jump to, like, D, for example. If X is positive... Okay, so no matter what X, here, because it's squared... Um, going to be positive for the top. The bottom, the sign... Okay, maybe let me back up. Let me explain one in a different way. I think I'm being confusing right now for this one. So here, let's pick like x is positive. Or let's pick quadrant one, where x and y are positive. So clearly, this is fine, because this it will be fine, because the slope will always be positive, and if x and y are both positive... Um, then the slope is positive, which seems the case here, right? Um, here, actually, let's... Now I'm thinking, is this a valid question? I'm assuming this was released by the College Board. So... Okay, regardless, let's continue. Um, so let's pick, like... Well, that's... Okay, let me back up again. So hopefully these two worked, or um, I explained it well, because, uh, as I said, if X and Y are both positive, or both negative, 
the slope should be positive, which is not the case here. And this, the slope should always be positive, which is not the case in, over here and here, right? The slopes are negative. So we eliminate this. Now we pick um, just some other test points to see if these hold true. For example, if um, we pick something in quadrant 3 over here, x is negative, so this top would be negative, because negative number cubed is negative. y is also negative in this quadrant, so this would be negative. Two negatives make a positive, which is not the case here, so we eliminate that. And similarly, actually this would not hold for these two. It'll be fine for these two, I believe. So we got to test the different quadrants now. So what happens if we test quadrant 2? There's some negative over here, right? So if x is negative, then this top would be positive. y is positive here. So two positives, of course, is a positive, but there's negative slopes here. So the answer is e. Sorry if I confused you, but this, that's the way to go about this. You just see patterns if that don't work, and you eliminate the choice. Um, and then otherwise, you just have to plug in a few points, like a few points in each quadrant to see if the slopes are kind of matching the pattern. Okay, so I'll color that part here. Hopefully this was helpful and not too confusing. Uh, please like and subscribe, as always, if you found this helpful. And please look out for the next part if you're interested.